Today I want to talk to you about five quite serious bad guitar technique habits that might really be holding you back right now from making the most amount of progress in the shortest amount of time possible. Correcting these five terrible mistakes starting today will give you a huge boost on your guitar journey and to help you as much as I possibly can I will also show you the five best exercises for getting rid of those nasty mistakes once and for all. The first thing I want to talk about today is something I like to call finger instability. This is extremely important because it's actually quite dangerous for your fretting hand. So what I mean with that is something I saw quite recently in a student progress video that I got on Patreon. It was from an intermediate player and he worked on some advanced guitar techniques already like sweep picking and also some faster alternate picking stuff. But he was complaining about sloppy results, a lot of string noise and very inconsistent takes. When I took a very close look at his fingers, I could actually see that they were bending through like this just a little bit whenever he was playing. So instead of them being nicely curled like this to get the best results, especially with hammer-ons and pull-offs and any kind of legato stuff, they were actually a little bit shaky and kind of, yeah, bending through like this. And if you try that right now, I think you can immediately identify that this doesn't feel right. It doesn't only feel dangerous when it comes to tendonitis or other injuries with your fingers. Your fingers will also always hit the frets at a completely different angle. They will sometimes touch the other strings surrounding the one that you're playing on. And it's quite impossible to get any consistent results out of a technique like this. Here's how it sounds and looks like when you play a legato line with nicely curled fingers. <laughs> When I play like this, I really feel in control of every single note and I can feel each individual finger as I'm hammering on or pulling off. And I also don't get any nasty string noise because my fingers are curled like this and they are not touching all the other strings. Let's try that again with the dangerous finger bending approach. <laughs> That did not sound great and it also feels super awkward to do that. So if you are suffering from finger instability at the moment and your fingers sometimes are bending like this, here's an awesome exercise based on trills that will help you with eliminating this problem as fast as possible. <laughs> So the way that I like to work on this, I'm simply picking a scale or arpeggios. I try to come up with different finger pairings in the scale like index finger, middle finger or middle finger, pinky finger. If you do that for the first time, especially with the combination ring finger, pinky finger, and you perform a trill like this, you might experience some finger instability because you're not used to that movement. So this is the perfect exercise for developing curled and stable fingers. The next important topic is something I like to call index finger dependence. So if you're like me and I guess 90% of guitar players, your index finger on your fretting hand is the most reliable and most powerful one. So whenever we are playing something complicated or technically challenging, our index finger plays a huge role in all of that, even if we don't need it for every single note. So a lot of people are constantly anchoring with their index finger while they are using their other fingers for hammer-ons and pull-offs, for example. When they could actually take it off the fretboard to feel the other fingers. But I'm not talking about the anchoring index finger specifically today. What I want to talk about is that we often neglect working on our weaker fingers in our practice routine. So with finger exercises, we mostly play full scales where we need all of our fingers, which is good. But as I mentioned, we often rely a bit too much on the index finger that's anchoring and doing a lot of heavy lifting for the other fingers. So what I've been working on in my practice routine recently is only working with those three fingers and ignoring the index finger. When you do that for the first time, it will feel absolutely crazy and it will immediately show you how much work you have to do with those other fingers and that they depend quite a lot on your strongest finger. Here's an awesome exercise with a big focus on alternate picking that will get you started. <laughs> As you could see, I wasn't using my index finger at all for this. And I'm also really trying to feel each finger individually. So I lift them relatively soon after I play the note with each respective finger. And that really, really, really helped me over the last couple of months with building additional strength and control with those 
weaker fingers. All right, so I know this was a little bit fast, but this is the tempo I'm currently working on when it comes to this exercise. Of course, and as always with these videos, I also made some very slow play along exercise videos for you so that you can practice together with me in your routine. You get a great look at my picking hand and fretting hand techniques so that you can mimic what you see on screen for the maximum amount of progress. And of course, you can also download the backing tracks with and without my guitar, a guitar profile with full instrumentation and a PDF tab sheet for this lesson and all lessons I posted so far by just joining today on patreon.com slash burned. The link is in the description and in the first comments down below. You immediately get access to over 20 guitar courses by joining right now. And this is really everything you need in one place to take your guitar technique to a world-class level in the shortest amount of time possible. The next thing I saw quite a lot in student videos on Patreon over the last couple of weeks is this uncontrolled picking hand finger movements. A lot of people don't know that finger movements with the picking hand can also be a really, really bad technique habit. As you probably know by now, I really recommend the closed picking hand approach for maximum control, speed and endurance with your fast lines. <laughs> But a lot of people that try this for the first time say that they get very inconsistent results with this technique. It kind of feels awkward to transition between the strings. Sometimes it works, other times it doesn't work. And as soon as I check out some student videos, I can usually immediately see why. A lot of guitarists, especially players that start out with this closed hand picking approach after playing open-handed for a long time, move their picking hand fingers quite a lot without actually realizing it. So instead of the picking technique looking like this, it looks and sounds a bit more like this. So with this bad demonstration, my thumb was moving quite a lot and my other fingers were moving as well. And what that means is that you will get a slightly different picking angle each time when you transition between the strings. It's basically completely random if you end up with something like this or this or even this when you don't have any control over the finger movement. So naturally, sometimes you end up with the right angles and it will sound good. But since it's completely random, other times it won't work out that well. So my suggestion is keeping your picking hand finger stiff like this, of course, without applying any pressure. And when it comes to those moving fingers, I actually discovered myself having this problem the most when I'm skipping between different strings. So right now I was just playing one note per string on the A, D and B string. And often your natural instinct with this could be moving your picking hand fingers a little bit to end up with the right angles for every single string. But as we said, that's really counterproductive when it comes to getting consistent results. So this is a really cool and quite musical picking exercise that you can do that will help you with developing that stiff, reliable picking hand movement. <music> The next one is called finger neglection or in my personal case ring finger neglection. Most of us guitar players find patterns that we are very comfortable with and that we use quite often in our music and that often means that there's a dominant leading finger in them. So when it comes to fast guitar licks maybe you're really comfortable leading with your index fingers. Or if you're into exotic scales it might be your middle finger. So what I mean with that is that your riffs or licks revolve around landing on one specific note or one specific finger. And what I learned about myself is that I barely use my ring finger for this. And this is a personal weakness that I discovered with my fretting hand technique. So I started working on ring finger dominant licks, so to say, and that didn't only help me with coming up with more interesting ideas. As you might have guessed, it also really helped me with the independence, control and strength of my ring finger. Here's the pretty cool sounding exercise I worked on to get my ring finger under control. Feel free to use this this concept with any other finger. And lastly, let's talk about the stiff picking hand wrist. This is actually something that the majority of rock and metal guitar players are suffering from. So although a lot of my students on Patreon are working with a wrist picking motion, which is great for speed, control and endurance. <laughs> They haven't really unlocked their wrist yet. The reason for that is that most rock and metal players mostly play single notes when it comes to fast guitar playing. So either fast alternate picking like that or sweep picking. And as soon as they have to play some funk inspired strumming stuff. 
they are completely screwed because you have to play across multiple strings very very fast and that requires a very loose and relaxed wrist. Now you might say I don't want to play any funk patterns so I don't need that but once you actually develop this loose and relaxed and controlled wrist motion that comes from funk strumming you will actually be able to feel the picking angle changes much much better with fast alternate picking because your wrist isn't so stiff anymore. <laughs> So working on actually fun exercises like this will have a huge effect on your alternate picking even though you're not exactly alternate picking that much. Alright my friends, I really hope I could help you with this video. If you're really serious about taking your guitar technique to a world class level starting today, just join our awesome Patreon community with the link down below. You will get immediate access to over 20 guitar courses and I think 300 lessons by now. So without exaggerating, this is everything you will ever need when it comes to practicing guitar in one place with one super awesome positive guitar community. You definitely belong here with us, so just click the link down below. I'm waiting for you over there. See you soon.